So you guys clicked on this video because you guys want to see soups. I did a video a while back this last fall and it was five crock pot recipes. So basically one for each night of the week. And that video was very, very well received. And I thought I wanna do another one similar to that, but make it all soups. I think in that video, I did do a soup or two. I honestly, I don't remember anymore, but um, I will link to that video in the description box below. But today what we're here for are five different soup recipes. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm looking outside right now and my thermometer is saying negative four. <laughs> and so it is the perfect kind of weather to be making soup. Uh, honestly, I could eat soup year round. So lucky for me and lucky for Warren, we both like soup. So I do make up a monthly meal plan for our supper meal and it just looks like a calendar and then I have a theme. So Sundays has a theme, Monday has a theme, Tuesdays has a theme. And I almost always have soup as one of those themes, but I get in these like crazy moods where I don't want to wait for every single Tuesday to make the soup so I just decide typically what I end up doing and the kids could vouch for this like if mom makes a soup one day you can bet that she's gonna be making soup multiple days in a row and that's what's been going down this week so I'm gonna be sharing with you guys five different soup recipes let me list them off for you right off the bat we're gonna be doing ham and wild rice soup a crock pot chicken soup no fuss potato soup, Mexican chili, and easy slow cooker stew. I did want to share taco soup with you guys. Um, I know that I've shared that on my channel before, but that is a staple around here. Everybody loves it. But what happened is that I had to teach religious ed last night. I was substituting and I put Sam on making the taco soup and I didn't think that he had it in him to film it and make it. It was the first time he did it. Uh, he did a fantastic job and we actually ate the whole entire pot last night for supper. So I'm not gonna share that. I will again link to um, my taco soup recipe in the description box in case you want that. One more thing before we get started. These soup recipes, um, I calculated out the cost per pot of soup, which is kind of, um, which was kind of fun to do. I calculated out, I mean, I went down to the quarter teaspoon of pepper and everything. All my prices are based on either Aldi or Walmart, depending on where I uh, most likely purchase that item. And so as we go through, I will tell you how much each pot of soup cost. And so that's kind of a interesting thing to do. If you have not ever taken your monthly grocery budget and divided it by 90, which would be, you know, um, breakfast, lunch, and supper, three meals a day times about 30 days in a month, um, you know, for 90 meals, if you have not ever done that and you know to see like what should I be spending on every single meal so when I do that for my grocery budget which is $700 when I divide that by 90 I think I just did it the other day and I get $7 a meal now I know we do not spend $7 on every meal and I also know that we don't eat every single meal at home so <clears throat> so there is excuse me so there is a little wiggle room in that uh, like breakfast and lunch usually what happens is you know, lunch, we're eating the leftovers from uh, the last couple of nights, and breakfast is usually pretty cheap because we're having things like eggs, oh my gosh, toast, bagels, things like that, cereal, um, or muffins, or you know, other things like that, it gets pretty cheap. So anyway, mine comes out to be $7 per meal, so that's just, I think, an interesting thing to note when you're meal planning. Let's get started with this first soup. No fuss potato soup. I absolutely love the soup. And can you believe it comes in at $3.48 for the entire pot. This is for the true penny pincher. So first up, I need to dice up a whole bunch of potatoes. This um, little contraption here makes it really easy to at least get them into like french fry sticks first. And then I can just go through, whoops, nope, not yet. I'm gonna have to take a little time out to help Joseph get his jacket zipped up because he has big plans of going and playing outside even though it's really really cold this day okay so it just helps me to get all of my potatoes cut into basically french fry sticks and then you can see I'm just going through with my big knife and chopping them into small cubes I don't worry about making them perfect it's potato soup after all okay Joe needs some more help and I have to let him know that he indeed has the wrong boots he needs to go and get his own boots i like to measure out about eight to ten cups of potatoes depending on how many people i'm going to feed or just how much soup i really want to make that day i need to chop up a whole onion in that crock pot over there i do already have six cups of water 
and I have my celery already, which is just about a cup of thin sliced celery. I have to add in another uh, pile of carrots. I usually add in about four cups of carrots. Stir everything up and then I'm adding in one fourth cup of butter and four teaspoons of chicken bouillon, that's the Noor seasoning blend, one teaspoon of salt, and then a good healthy dose of black pepper. I will set this to high and let that cook for about four or five hours before I come back and add in a can of evaporated milk uh, it, this isn't necessary, but it just does give it a nice creamy richness. I throw in two tablespoons of dried parsley. You can do fresh, of course, but I rarely have that on hand. Give it a good stir, and it's basically ready to serve at this point. It's a really, really good soup, and it's so easy to put together. Like the name of the recipe says, it is really no fuss. Today's video is sponsored by De La Terre Ceramic Cookware. All the information will be in the first line of the description box below. Right away, the thing I want to point out, though, is that it is so very versatile. You can use this on your gas range. You can put this in the freezer and then directly into the oven. If there's more than one person cooking in your house, which there is in my house, you uh, don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about it because it is scratch resistant and it's microwave safe and it's oven safe and it's range top safe and it's just everything. So I really really like versatile um, cookware when there's a lot of people in the household, like there is in our household. I also absolutely love the color i mean they just knocked it out of the park i think when they chose this blue color it's such a pretty color i will talk a little bit more about this later on for this crock pot chicken soup, what we're going to be starting out with is really just two split chicken breasts. I couldn't find a pack that had two in, so I have this pack with three. I'm not going to use all this chicken because this is a lot of chicken and it does take the cost of this soup um, up a little too high in my opinion um, if I used all three chicken breasts. I'm going to cook all three of them, but I'm only going to use two of them in the soup. So I have my split chicken breasts rinsed and I just patted them dry over here. And then I made up a uh, pie plate with spices. So I have kosher salt, paprika, crushed red pepper flakes, ground thyme, uh, garlic powder, fresh ground black pepper, and rosemary leaves. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mix all that up, and then I'm going to press these into that and use up all of those spices. That's what makes this a little bit different than just your traditional um, chicken noodle soup that has more of the um, like chicken soup stock or the chicken soup uh, bouillon kind of flavoring. This is just going to have a little bit different flavoring, a little bit spicy. The coolest thing I think about um, making soup though is that if you, um, soup is so forgiving. So if you want a little more meat or a little less meat, do you like your soup brothier, then add some more water. If you want it more, um, a little bit more like a stew or a little chunkier, leave out some of the water. Just adjust your seasonings appropriately. Uh, you don't like red pepper flakes or you're afraid that you th that it's going to be too spicy for you, just put in an eighth of a teaspoon just to kind of try it out. Um, not sure if you're going to like paprika, whatever it might be, you can change it up. That is the best thing about um, soup soup and like if I'm making later on when you see me adding the vegetables to the soup if you don't like those my choice of vegetables 
then do something else that you guys like. So if you like potatoes or you like corn or you like peas or you like celery or carrots or whatever it is, you can change it up. And that I think is why I like soup so much because not only can I make a pot of soup following a recipe to the T, but I can also take a base recipe and say, oh, I don't have that in my pantry or in my refrigerator right now. I can use really anything I have on hand. Oh, I'm out of celery, so what? I'll just add more onion. Oh, I'm out of something. I'll just look in the freezer. What do I have for frozen vegetables? And I can throw that in. And that is what is so great and uh, frugal about soup. So, so this particular crock pot chicken soup costs $6.53 for the whole entire pot. Now, um, I'm guessing that my family is not going to eat the whole pot for supper, so we'll have leftovers for lunch the next day, which really makes it a very, very economical meal. I need to get moving on this, though. This is an excellent soup if um, you have a little cold, um, you know, going through the household because it has that red pepper flakes, which naturally help to loosen up the sinuses. I put about a half a cup of water in here just to rinse out the last of the spices. I'm going to pour that not over top, but just right next to my chicken because I don't want to pour or, you know, rinse off the spices. That's what it looks like. I'm just going to put the cover on this. Turn this on high. I will come back and check this in three hours. We're going to go homeschool. a little sticky note next to my crock pot if I have to remember a particular time like when to turn it off or something otherwise I know I'll forget so I put 1215 on here it's actually 1250 right now I came uh, came by at about 1235 turned it off actually first I checked the temperature it was completely cooked through turned it off took the lid off because what I want is for it to cool a little bit so that I can start working with it I'm going to take all that meat off the bone while it's been cooling. You saw that I cut up my vegetables, and so this recipe calls for three cups of vegetables plus an onion. Um, I did a half of a large onion, you saw, and then I just did some carrots and celery. I do, I believe, have some frozen peas that I think I will throw in there at the end just as a, another... Um, you know, just another shade of green and just another vegetable because I have some in the freezer that I want to use up. I have some chicken broth here and then we're just going to have some egg noodles. But the key to this one is just all these good spices. This just smells like it's clearing my sinuses. It smells so good and um, yeah, I just really, really like this. So let me take a few minutes and get the meat off the bone and um, get that back into the crock pot. I saved some scraps here for Eska. This is just like some of the uh, chicken skin and a little bit of cartilage. I think she's gonna like that, even though it's gonna be a little spicy. And then here are two chicken breasts all cut up. Here's the one that I'm gonna save. And I'm just going to, oh, it's still a little warm. I'm just gonna put that in here and I'm actually gonna save that for a meal tomorrow or something, excuse me, my, while I wipe my fingers. And this is all the chicken that I'm gonna put into the chicken noodle soup. Okay, so now all I have to do is put the vegetables. I'm gonna put these two things of chicken broth in here. I did go through and skim out like some of the little bits of fat and chicken and or um, fat and skin and things like that that was in here. You can see there's still a little left. It actually is way less than what it looks like through the camera. But um, I am not even gonna separate out the fat. I'm just gonna let that all be part of the chicken soup for the first time that we eat it here. And then when it does cool overnight, I'll skim off um, whatever fat is there before we warm it up tomorrow for lunch. all the vegetables in. Now again you could just use bouillon cubes if you want to 
and water, that would work just fine as well. A sugar cube, you heard me say cube, didn't you? And now you're like, hmm, I kind of could go for a sugar cube. Yep, I'll give you a sugar cube in just a second, okay? Can I two? Two, I think one will be plenty. Nope, because I'm right here, right cooking right here, okay? Sorry. They're up here. Can you open the cabinet? Can you get me one? Can I open one? Are you using those all? Okay, let's give this a stir. I always like to stick my finger in it quick and taste it just to be sure that it has a good flavor. Mm, this is good. This has a nice kick to it. So if you don't like a, a little bit of spice, then you will want to cut back on the uh, cayenne pepper flakes. But like I said, this is such an excellent soup if you have a lot of congestion because it's just that um, uh, the red pepper flakes are just a natural decongestant and it's mm, just, I just love it. <laughs> okay, and Maria wants a sugar cube. There you go, sweetie. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to put this back onto high. I'm going to cover it. It's one o'clock right now. I'm pretty certain that all of the vegetables are going to be uh, nice and soft, probably by, let's see, one, two, three, four, probably by four or five o'clock. And then I will put the noodles in and let it just, um, you know, let those cook for like another 20 minutes or something. All right, so I've just kind of been doing my own thing here for the last three hours. I had made a note. Uh, there we go, that four o'clock was when I needed to come check on my soup. I'm gonna take the cover off, give it a stir. I'm gonna take out probably the biggest carrot I can find, the thickest carrot. And then I'm gonna let that cool. Actually, let's see, oh, yes. Okay, so that is nice and soft. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. I'm just going to put in a half a bag, which would be eight ounces of egg noodles. And like I said before, I'm also going to grab the peas from the freezer and I'm going to throw some peas in, in this soup as well. On second note, no peas. I must have used them up in the last time I made soup. Now that the noodles are in, I'm just gonna let this go for about probably 20 minutes to a half an hour. Those noodles will be completely um, cooked through and we'll be ready for supper. I do have some of these Rhodes rolls. I see I must have <laughs> moved the pan and they got a little, a little uh, messed up. Okay, we'll see you. Have fun, what time are you gonna be home? Just letting those rise. I'll let those rise a little bit longer and then they will be ready to bake. Maybe I'll turn on my oven because it is so cold today and now as the oven preheats they'll keep rising it actually made it above zero here this morning when i started the soup it was like four below i think and now it's about five above so we did make it above zero which is kind of a treat but still the soup is going to taste excellent excellent i'm not sure if i mentioned it already but this entire pot of soup only cost six dollars and 53 cents so um and that is just taking into consideration everybody's yelling in the background about something um and that's taking into consideration absolutely everything all the way down to the salt and the ground thyme and just all of the spices absolutely everything now with some of the recipes you can make a little bit cheaper if you go less meat and a little bit more on the noodle or the rice or something like that so if you're really really watching your budget just shrink the meat and increase the carb that's okay um and then also if you like i have a lot of meat in my freezer so i don't have to go out and buy each of the individual meats this time i did the chicken i didn't have in my freezer but uh you know like if i'm making something with ground meat i use venison which we already have and we also have um you know beef and things like that from a cow that we uh, bought as well so you know sometimes you can get by a little bit cheaper but when I calculated out my prices here for you guys I did it as if I had to buy every single ingredient today
today. <laughs> Since today's video is sponsored by De La Terre, I really did want to make like just a baked good <laughs> in the middle of all these soups. And so what I'm gonna do today is make a blueberry cake or blueberry coffee cake, I guess you could call it. And again, this is one of those kinds of recipes that if you're not into blueberries, switch it up. Raspberries, cranberries, uh, you could use apples even, really any kind of fruit. Rhubarb works with this. And, um, you know, pretty much this amount of sugar is going to work for just about any one of the fruits. Some might be a little more tart than others, but, I mean, it's coffee cake. You know, it kind of has a, it, variation is okay in coffee cake. So, I wanted to use this pan. This is a 9 by 12 De La Terre baking dish. And um, it does perform similarly to a 9 by 13 pan. I did notice that when I cooked brownies in it the other day, we did have to bake the brownies um, a little bit on the longer side. Normally I would bake the brownies about 25 to 30 minutes, and they did have to go about 35 minutes um, to be fully done. Just because with it being a little bit smaller, Everything was a little bit thicker. So this is what I'm going to make my blueberry cake in today. Beautiful, beautiful ceramic cookware. This can be used on the stove top. It can be used in the oven. You can put it in the freezer, put it in the microwave. It's naturally um, non-stick, although I'm, I just still butter everything. <laughs> That's just who I am. Um, and it is safe in the oven. Whoops, focus. And it is safe in the oven all the way up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, you pour you pour the blueberries in. You kind of have to Not sprinkle me. them all across the top, okay? Okay. What are you making? No. We're making a blueberry cake. So can you sprinkle those all over? Now these are frozen blueberries and that's quite okay. I didn't thaw them or anything. I'm just going to spread them across the top. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't do a perfect job spreading these here and that's no big deal because you know what this corner is going to have some cinnamon sugar on it and the kids are going to be happy that there uh, probably isn't a blueberry in that section so that'll probably be the piece that everybody fights over okay here we go we just have a mix of sugar and cinnamon the recipe does call for a half a cup i've never done that much sugar this is about a third maybe even only a fourth of a cup in there it looks more like a third and then a half teaspoon of uh, cinnamon okay maria I've got Maria here. She's going to sprinkle it over there. What do you think? Does this look like something you're going to like? Maybe. Maybe. Keep sprinkling. Yep, all around. I think it's just sprinkling back into the cup. There you go. you got to tip the cup a little bit. Get it into all the corners, too. One sec. I'm putting stuff on Mom's cake mm -hmm. Whoa. that's okay yep yep get some over here nice and some over there good and all along in the middle here great so there we go we're gonna pop this in the oven for 45 minutes test it with a toothpick and see if it needs to go a few minutes longer
For our next recipe, we are, uh, well, I am making something out of this Gooseberry Patch One Pot Meals cookbook. And I do know that um, a number of you have said that you have purchased this. This recipe is on page 103 and it's called Easy Slow Cooker Beef Stew. Now I did calculate this one out using um, uh, beef as my meat and using stew meat from the grocery store. So this recipe does come out to be $11.61 for the whole pot. And I do think that it could be done cheaper. Um, one, you could look at, um, at Aldi for the meat. You could start with um, like a roast, a small roast, and cut it up yourself rather than buying stew meat. That saves money. Otherwise, like for me, I'm just I just have um, venison in here. So we had some venison steak cut, and I just uh, cubed it up here before I put it into my lined um, crock pot here. So this is a six quart crock pot, and. I lined it with one of those, I think this brand is Boulder, right, these are the liners that I had found at Aldi. Someone had uh, turned me on to that last fall that they had them as like a seasonal item. My potatoes were fairly large, so I only used three potatoes. Then I'm going to pour on, pour over this bag of baby carrots. And I don't like that carrot at all. I have like a rotten carrot in there and I don't know how that happened. So let me get that picked out and I'll be back. So I don't know how I missed that, but there was that rotten um, carrot in there. So I got that pulled out. And then what I did is I actually just took all the carrots back out, gave them a really good rinse because I didn't want any of that, um, you know, slime from that one rotten carrot on the other ones. Oh, and Maria is here and she's been working on her. She has one of these like window cling. Um, yeah, and this Craft is for projects. sucking thing. Sucking I'll some show nectar. You another one. Okay, so I'm just going to pour all of these carrots on top now. So the gravy in this calls for one can of French onion soup, one can of tomato soup, and then a can of beef broth. But to be super frugal, I'm just going to use two beef bouillon cubes, and then I will fill up one of these cans here with water and add that into here. We're going to get it all mixed up, pour it over the stew. As this cooks, those beef bouillon cubes will just naturally dissolve. And um, like about halfway through, I will actually open this up and give it a little stir. And we will be serving this tonight while the Packers are playing. And again, I know I've mentioned this before, but when you do use these bags, you definitely want to make sure that your lid is seated on there tightly because wherever you have like little folds or something, sometimes it doesn't want to get on there nice and tight. So just push it in there, make sure it's tight. And this says to cover and select low for 8 to 10 hours. That takes me to 8 o'clock, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That takes me anywhere between 4 and 6 o'clock, which is perfect because the Packer game is on at 540. So this will be ready just in time for that. So I look forward to trying this. This is a new recipe. Um, Sam had actually asked <laughs> while everybody in the house was so sick, um, he actually had, I don't know, he was watching a show or something and they were having stew and he's like, oh, when I get better, he said, I really want some venison stew. So anyways, I thought it was just about time to make that. And then Nick just served up some stew here. So that's what the stew is looking like. He's going to taste that and um, <laughs> let us know how it tastes here in a minute, okay? Which chip? You want <laughs> Is it good? Mm hmm. That's hot. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think it's from that French onion soup mm. yeah. that was in there. That seemed like it would give it a lot of really good flavor. Well, I think it's, it's awesome. Like I said, I think it could use a little bit more pepper. I wouldn't mind a little bit more spice to it, but mm -hmm. anyway, it's very good. All right. <laughs> Great. Thanks. So next up, I am going to be making some Mexican chili, and that is also going to be for us to choose from uh, to eat during the Packer game tonight. They're in the playoffs, and we are definitely rooting for them to make it to the uh, Super Bowl. And I thought, let's eat while we watch the game. Today's video is sponsored by De La Terre, and it is a distinctly different ceramic cookware. So to get started with this Mexican chili, what I needed to do was get my Dutch oven nice and hot. 
and then I put in, this is just a little over one pound of ground venison. Of course, you can use ground beef or ground turkey, whatever ground meat it is you like. And this is one large onion. And so I'm just going to let this cook until the meat is browned. I'm not going to need to drain this because this is venison. There's just not going to be any fat um, that needs to be drained off. So I'm really liking the way the meat and onions are looking. I have just a tiny bit of pinkness left in my meat, but that is okay. I'm gonna add in my celery and my green peppers now. I'm going to add in the rinsed and drained green chilies. I just have four more items to add, and one of those items is a 28, 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes a six ounce can, I think that's what that is, right? Yes, of tomato paste, two cans of undrained kidney beans. These are my home canned ones, so I'm just going to pour the whole thing in. And then I do have the spices here as well. There's some sugar in here, salt, marjoram, garlic pepper, a bay leaf, and then just a sprinkle of fresh ground pepper in there as well. So this is the basically the finished product. I mean, it does have to, uh, it says it should simmer for about 30 minutes. I'm actually going to move it to my small burner on the back of my stove here and I'm just going to let it simmer or just be on low until we're ready to eat because I just want the flavors to really go through. I did just kind of stick my finger in there and tasted it and it really tastes a lot like salsa actually. So I think that this is really going to be well received. Um, and I do see that one of the things I could do with this is I could add more water to it and I could add rice if we wanted some kind of a grain uh, mixed into this. But for now, I'm going to leave it just the way it is. And I do want to say that this is $7.92 for the entire pot. And that was calculating out um, a pound of ground beef at $3.78 for the pound of the ground beef. I really hope that you guys are enjoying this video with the soups and the stews and the chilies. It's just such comforting food for winter and when we are having these cold, cold days like we are having right now. I see this is already starting to boil. That's a good thing. I'm going to move this back though because I do, I don't want it to boil really, really hard. So we just served up the Mexican chili here and I did stick my finger in it and it actually tastes a lot like um, salsa or what else did I say? Like, like nacho, nacho meat. meat. It tastes kind of like and it has a consistency of like a liquidy nacho meat. So I did throw out some chips here and maybe people will eat it with chips. I don't really know, but I think it would be really good with sour cream too. It just tastes like chili, but with kind of like a Mexican twist. Mm -hmm. I personally I like it just plain, not with the chips. At all. Not with the chips, yeah. okay. But it is good. I do really like it. Awesome, great. Um, can you see me? I can see you too, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> For ham and rice soup, we should start by dicing up yet more celery and more onion. <laughs> Can you guys tell that those are some of my favorite foods uh, to use in soup? And then I have my Dutch oven over here and uh, half a stick of butter. I'm just going to saute up the vegetables until they are nice and soft. I head over to the counter to dice up the carrots. And I did want my carrots a little bit smaller for this soup. I, I really have no rhyme or reason why some soups, I like them big and some small, but that's just how it is. I measure up two cups of milk and I'm gonna put my pepper in there right away as well. That's a third cup of flour sitting on the counter. Earlier in the week, Amber did some meal prep, and so she prepped a whole bunch of extra wild rice and brown rice for me, which was really helpful on this uh, busy day. And then I did have my Christmas ham. Remember the $47 ham? I had some of that uh, diced up and in the freezer so I could use it for soup or something. I'm finally getting a chance to do that. I love using the Norse seasoning. I believe that I put in about three tablespoons or so. I add my carrots back to my Dutch oven and just kind of saute them until the carrots are slightly softened. Sprinkle in the flour 
and stir around until the flour gets soaked into all the moisture that is in the vegetables. Add my milk and then I just stir it around until it starts to thicken slightly. Adding in all the rice and all the ham and I'm just going to let this kind of simmer away And here it is all finished up. It smells so good. It tastes so good. I really appreciate you guys always being here. And, and down below are two more videos that you might enjoy.